Whoa, it seems like you liked the first video. Or maybe you just liked us, Big Chet and Adam Andrews. Either way, we heard you want a part two, and you know what? You got it, kiddos. Today on Bumblebee, we present to you part two of the top 10 unusual events from modern history. Ooh la la. Ooh. Number 10, Monica. There have only been three presidents to be formally impeached in the US. Andrew Johnson was the first. Most recent would be Donald Trump, twice, but the second would be none other than President Bill Clinton. In November of 1995, Mr. Clinton began to have a spicy little entanglement with 21-year-old unpaid intern Monica Lewinsky at the White House. But just like every decision to hit up a Taco Bell, that kind of thing always comes back to bite you. You think maybe this time will be okay, and then you're sweating on the toilet on the verge of tears. Monica began to tell her coworker Linda Tripp about the little affair she was a part of, and unbeknownst to Miss Lewinsky, Linda began to record it all. After another woman, Paula Jones, began to sue the president for sexual harassment, Lewinsky was subpoenaed, and things just went on a spiral of investigation that climaxed on December 19, 1998, when Bill Clinton was charged with lying under oath to a federal grand jury and obstructing justice. But he finished his term, so. Number nine, Hindenburg. Flight. For many years, people have dreamed of flying with the birds in the sky. In the early 1900s, this became a reality. Air travel and machine design quickly developed over a short period of time. While today we are most familiar with airplanes, jets, and helicopters, there was another vehicle that was becoming a mainstay of military use and air travel. Blimps, or airships. After a brief use in World War I, they became something of a luxury. Long distance, smooth air travel. The issue? Well, they were kind of slow and prone to crashing, which is bad. What's the cause of these crashes? Well, to be exact, there's more than one, but the big issue or the big problem for these airships was that they were filled with hydrogen. Your 10th grade chemistry teacher will let you know just how flammable and dangerous that gas is. The Hindenburg airship crashed on a routine landing in 1937. Oh, the humanity. Number eight, Oppenheimer. I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. The Hindu scripture that ran through the mind of J. Robert Oppenheimer when he first witnessed the devastation of the device he led the creation of on July 16, 1945. He was not wrong. Ever since Nagasaki and Hiroshima, the entire world knows the absolute world-ending potential nuclear war could unleash. Oppenheimer was the leader of the Manhattan Project in Los Alamos, New Mexico, beginning in 1942, which was basically meant to figure out how to use atomic energy for the military. They were successful enough that it directly led to Oppenheimer wanting to completely stop development. And when they wouldn't, he straight up resigned. Instead, he became chairman of the General Advisory Committee of the Atomic Energy Commission. And in October 1949, he opposed the development of the devices he helped create. This simple opposition led to him being labeled a communist supporter, suspended from secret nuclear research, and stripped of his security clearance by the Atomic Energy Commission. He wanted to help prevent the development of weapons that could bring on the apocalypse. Sometimes history makes me legitimately upset. Number seven, Mr. Yamaguchi. There are those that possess the power of ninjutsu. There are those that harness the power of titans. And there are those who transform from a Japanese schoolgirl into a schoolgirl with a sailor outfit and have the power of the moon. I, I don't know. Well, then there are those who possess the power to resist the apocalypse. Mr. Yamaguchi is a unique man. A man who survived not one, but two atomic detonations during World War II. The great part? He lived a long life, advocating for peace in a nuclear arms free world. The first initial blast left him with burns and hearing loss. When telling people of a survival story three days later, no one would believe him, as such a thing could not exist, right? Well, that's when the second detonation occurred. This time he was unharmed, and I'm sure people believed him that time. Number six, Obama. While it should not be unusual, it was, and it was groundbreaking. On November 4, 2008, Barack Hussein Obama Jr. became the first African American president in the history of the United States of America and gave hope to millions of Americans that they too could achieve anything they wanted to. His father grew up in the Inyaza province of Kenya before going to Hawaii to study economics, where he met the future president's mother, Ann Dunham, from Kansas. As a former senator of Illinois, whose campaign slogan was change we can believe in and yes we can, Barack was elected to a second term over Massachusetts Governor Mitt Romney in 2012. 
As president, Barack was the winner of the 2009 Nobel Peace Prize. He was responsible for the passage of the Affordable Health Care Act, the delifing of Osama bin Laden by SEAL Team 6, and the legalization of gay marriage by the Supreme Court. Nice. Number 5. Violet Jessup Miss Unsinkable. What if I told you that Miss Jessup was a survivor of the Titanic, Britannic, and the Olympic? I know, right? The Titanic should need no introduction. It always has been and will be immortalized by a James Cameron movie. But you may not know that the Titanic had sister ships, the Britannic and the Olympic. Miss Violet Jessup was a nurse on all three. The Titanic hit an iceberg and sank, of course. The Britannic hit a sea mine and sank. The Olympic had a fender bender with another ship, but uh, that one didn't sink. Just kind of a, just a little bit of damage to the hull, but it made it back to shore, so that's that's good. Now, I'm not superstitious or anything like that, but the odds and luck of finding yourself on three of the largest vessels and surviving all of those three catastrophes? I don't know. Bad omen or good luck charm? Maybe just stay off that line of cruisers. Regardless, she is remembered as Miss Unsinkable and for her bravery in all scenarios, especially the Britannica. A severe head injury didn't even stop her. You go, girl. You go. Number four, Amelia Earhart. Almost everyone has heard of her at some point in their lives. Amelia Earhart's disappearance somewhere over the Pacific in July of 1937 is one of the world's greatest unsolved mysteries. Amelia Earhart was a female American aviator who set a literal ton of records and pushed for women advancing in aviation. She was the first woman to fly solo across the Atlantic and the first to fly solo from Hawaii to the mainland. She served as a Red Cross nurse's aide in our home of Toronto during World War II and would spend her time watching pilots in the Royal Flying Corps train while hanging out there. She was the first woman to receive the Flying Cross's Military Medal awarded for heroism or extraordinary achievement while participating in an aerial flight. But it was in 1937 when she would try and fly around our lovely blue and green globe and would disappear into legend. Number three, refuse espionage. All right, folks, this is a new one for me. So during the Cold War, the eastern half of the world was cozying up to this brand new thing called communism. What? What's that? And what's better than that? The two major superpowers in the east were now both communist and cozying up to each other like Lenin in a Marx book by an open fire. Naturally, this made the West and America sweat. Make me sweat too. A lot of things do. It was concerning to say the least. Russia and China, socialist best friends. Everything was just peachy, except that Stalin did not exactly trust Mao. So to learn more about his new best friend, he had spies manipulate some things and uh, was going to judge what kind of a leader he was off of a stolen stool sample. Yes, you heard that right. For example, a lack of potassium in your refuse could be related to something of a nervous disposition, not the kind of qualities you want in your dictator best friend. Kind of like reading astrology, but from the sewer. Number two, movies. Going to the movies, the smell of popcorn, awkward first dates, and memories of sticky floors with no explanation. I love going to the movies, but it wouldn't be possible without the invention of the cinematograph and the Lumiere brothers, Louis and August. Louis Lumiere's Cinemagraph, which patented in 1895, was a combination movie camera and projector that would display moving images on a screen for an audience. The Cinematograph was smaller, lighter, and used less film than the Kinetograph and Kinetoscope, invented by Thomas Edison. And in 1896, the brothers opened up the first theaters called cinemas to show what they made. They sent camera crews around the world to shoot new material. It did not take long for this tech to travel, though. America opened its first cinemas in New Orleans the same year. In 1909, we got our first film review from the New York Times, the first Hollywood film studio in 1911, and Charlie Chapman started his career in 1914. And now we have mega corporations that pump out blockbusters monthly. Nice. Number one, Elvira, Elvira. So smart, this one, honestly, so five head. So back in World War II, Germany went on tour. The tour included soldiers, ships, planes, and tanks. Mechanization, baby, nice. It's what we do. Now, any dad out there that's been doing small engine repair in the garage will tell you that sometimes a motor comes along that just stumps you. No matter how long you work on her, she just doesn't want to start. Only if you had a handbook to describe her inner workings. But you lost the manual years ago in the spring cleaning of 98. Ooh, sorry. Well, German soldiers had that manual, and to make them pay attention to said manual, there was illustrations of a gorgeous woman named Elvira who, on a lot of pages, would be missing parts of her clothing and or in revealing positions. So the equation goes, tough engine repair plus book of knowledge multiplied by a pretty cartoon lady equals paying attention. What about the engine again? 
Well, that's gonna wrap it up for today, folks. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe here at Bumblebee. And if you too wanna fly around the world with two handsome devils like us, then check out our social somewhere down below. Down somewhere. there. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. I've been Adam Andrews. I've been Big Chetty. <laughs> Toodles. Oh, bye. Yeah, bye. <laughs> we had tacos for lunch. It's not gonna be good. Okay. We have fun here. This is we good. We do. We do. And then he farts on me. But the big issue, or the big problem, for these airships was that they were filled with hydrogen. Your 10th grade chemistry teacher will let you know just how flammable and dangerous that gas is. The Hindenburg airship crashed on a routine landing in 1937. Oh, the humanity! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, we got it! That was so good! <laughs> 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 I'll see you in a little bit of Blue Angel.